Welcome to LDSBookReviews.com. My name is Ryan Daly, and today we are going to be reviewing Early Mormonism and the Magic Worldview by Michael Quinn. I am a little nervous about giving this review, actually, because I'm not sure how popular my review will be uh, in LDS areas. Uh, but I'm going to be honest exactly where I feel about this. I'm actually going to give this book a four-star review because for the topic, it is the best book on the topic. Um, I don't believe that every member of the church needs to read this. I don't believe that uh, most members of the church need to read this. However, on the topic of the magic worldview in the early 19th century and the impact of uh, that magic uh, world in uh, the life of the Smiths, this is probably an influence. This is probably the best and only book on the topic. So I have a hard time not giving it a four-star review. I really, it was an easy three-star. I actually really enjoyed the book. Now, to put it into context, I, I've got to put it in the context a little bit. Um, Michael Quinn, it's hard for me not to do context with the author itself, but Michael Quinn, after this book, actually was excommunicated from the church. I'm not going to go into whether it was because of this book or whatnot, things like that, but he's fairly well known uh, in academic. Uh, I believe he's at Yale right now um, going through. He's at Yale right now uh, as a professor, smart cookie, smart guy. Um, let me kind of give you my interpretation of this text, and I, I've got to I've got to get into his introduction. I'm pretty sure I highlighted it. I would love to have been more prepared. Am I right? Right. Um, pretty much the bulk of this text is this book was written at a time in Mormon thought where there was quite a bit of hesitancy in accepting anything outside the standard narrative of what we understood Joseph Smith being a prophet meant and was and the Smith family as well as the restoration of the church. And so there's quite a bit of at this time, hesitancy in taking into account any other narrative. Now, with this book, it became quite clear that there is some influence, cultural influence, on the Smiths and the Smith family and Joseph, in general, of early Christian occult or early Christian magic, right? Seer stones, uh, peepers, uh, celestial reading, things like this. And that wouldn't wasn't accepted. And so Michael Quinn took it upon himself to take all of that worldview and show the influence that it had on Joseph Smith. Now he is quite clear in the introduction that because there is the influence, uh, the cultural influence in his life, that doesn't take away from his prophetic mantle, his calling, or the things that he brought. And that's key. And that's I, I appreciate that being stated from Michael Quinn to begin with. And so at the time this book was written, the need for the unwillingness to accept anything required the book to be written in the way that it becomes indisputable, drives the message down. Uh, and so when you read it, it really is just about the magic worldview about the influence of that culture in the Smith family and how it played a role in their family dynamics. In saying that, it drives the point home so hard that one, you can't argue with it, and two, you could get the impression that in and of itself in the context of the book, that's all the influence that was there. Now that's not what I believe Michael Quinn's intent was, but his intent was he had to drive it so far home that it couldn't be challenged. And so that's why he hyper-focuses and spends 500 pages just dwelling on the facts and the evidence and the facts and the evidence and here it is, here it is, here it is, here it is. I think sometimes the common reader could read into this and say, Michael thinks this is the only influence in this life. And Michael states clearly in this, Mr. Quinn states clearly in this, that that's not his belief, that he does believe Joseph was a prophet at the time, and that just because there's a cultural influence in his life and it plays into his life at times doesn't take away from his prophetic mantle. I, I have to be clear on that because 
that's one reason why I don't think everyone needs to read this book, and I don't think a lot of people will find value in this book. But what I do think is important is that this book came at a time uh, where we now take for granted its contribution. And I think that's clear. Uh, it came at a time in the late 80s and early 90s when it, it, we take for granted its contribution because today we readily accept elements that this book brought about. We accept Seer Stones. We accept some of that influence. Uh, when you read Rough Stone Rolling by Richard Bushman, he references the book and Michael Quinn's uh, research, and he actually openly accepts that influence. And so today, we accept that influence, we take it, but at the time this text was written, it wasn't accepted at all. And that's why I think it is an important text uh, that is considered within Mormonism and Mormon thought. Uh, and so you are going to get references, you're going to get background, dates, times, things like that. I did. I think I did better understand a little bit of the restoration. I give it four stars on the topic. Uh, for most members of the church, it is a three to two star book. It's not necessary, but uh, I have to give some respect to uh, Michael Quinn for kind of driving this home, letting us have a bigger picture and seeing that there are people involved with a cultural influence in the restoration as we are today. And that culture just happened to be focused on magic and allowed Joseph to maybe more readily accept the experiences that were happening to him. It's very possible that someone else couldn't have had these experiences without that cultural background. Uh, and so I really appreciated the book more than I thought I would. Uh, it, there is some discomfort saying like, oh, this is a great book, but for its content, it really is. Um, I, again, it's not one that I go around and recommend to a lot of people, but when people show interest and they peak interest, this is definitely the best book on the topic, the most comprehensive, almost to a fault. And I think that's where it gets its criticism. It's came at a time where it needed to be comprehensive and driving, uh, but as a result of it being comprehensive and driving, it could lead the passive reader to think that Quinn is saying that is the only influence. And I don't believe that was Quinn's message at all. So again, four stars, early Mormonism and the magic world do uh, Michael Quinn's work on that. Uh, wow. Good job, man. Good job. But uh, it did impact and influence Mormon thought after that. I hope you enjoyed this review, LDSBookReviews.com. Please feel free to visit LDSBookReviews.com as well as follow the channel and any other reviews that you see on this YouTube page. Thanks, guys.